Hey, it's hump day. It's Wednesday. It's March 27th, day 87, and we're halfway through the week. We're in, a, in about a half a day, we'll be halfway through the week. Okay, let's get real. Hey, I wanted to share something with you in John 15, 16. It's kind of cool. John 15, 16 says, you know, you did not choose me. I chose you. You did not choose me, I chose you. So unlike the things that we choose throughout life, what religion we want to follow, uh, what church we want to go to, what grocery store do we want to shop at, you know, who do we want to date, who do we want to marry, uh, what do we want to buy, all of those things are choices that we have. But the one choice we don't have is who created us and whose we are. And in John 15, 16, God says, uh, God says, you did not choose me, I chose you. So fundamentally, if you think that through, you come to the realization that if somebody else chose me and I'm the idea and creation of someone else, then this life isn't about me. This is a hard lesson I've been through, going through my entire life, you know, because we're, we're all greedy. We're all a little selfish and self-centered. It's human nature. It's called sin, right? But the reality is somebody else created you for a life uh, far better than anything that you could do on your own. So if you surrender, uh, later on in Scripture, it's, uh, God says, you know, the, 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 that the, the, he who lives in you can uh, abundantly and far exceed uh, anything that you could ever accomplish on your own in your life if you just surrender and do the will of the person who created you. And so the question is, what is the will that uh, this creator has for you? I don't know. I don't know what the will is. And that goes back to the, the things I spoke about in the past. You know, the two greatest days of your life are the day you were born, the day that you were chosen, and the day you find out why. The day that you find out why and start following that path. So unlike choosing which grocery store you're going to go to, unlike choosing which church or movie or uh, career opportunity you're going to follow, you have to surrender this life. This is the one choice that you don't have. You think you have it, but you don't. You don't. I'm just being straight up with you. And I have found in, in the past many years that when I, when I just kind of think through and pray, you know, just show me what, what, you know, why am I here? You know, I've got the first part of the equation solved. I was born. That was one great day of my life. The next one is, tell me why I'm here. What is this life that you have for me that's abundantly and clearly far better than anything I can create and do on my own? And then just listen in quietness. And sometimes what you'll hear, and, and I'm not talking about, you know, the boogeyman speaking to you or anything like that, but you just hear a voice deep down in your gut, maybe in your mind like I did yesterday. You'll get the answer. But then the challenge is following through on the answer because quite often you're being asked to go somewhere where you don't want to go. You don't, things you don't want to do. You're like, no, nah, I don't know if I want to do that, right? Well, it goes back to what we were talking about the, uh, a couple of weeks ago. You know, if, if you knew what the answer to the prayer was that you've been asking for and that answer is one year out, but God's got to take you on a journey for the text, next 12 months to prepare you for it. You, if you knew ahead of time what that journey looked like, you go, no, time out. I tap out. I, I take the prayer back. I don't want to go through that journey. But that's not the way it works. So you, you go through the journey. Iron sharpens iron, helps develop your character, your personality, preparing you for the answer to the prayer. That's what God does when he says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I can give you and do for you far abundantly. That word appears often throughout the Bible. Don't think that he's just here to squeak you by or get you by. No, he's, he wants to give you abundantly what life has to offer. And you have to come to the throne boldly and ask for it. Remember I talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Don't be afraid to ask big. Don't be afraid to ask what your will is for me, Lord. And, uh, and go out and do what he's asking you to do. Take that step of faith. Be brave, be strong, and go get what's yours.